hello everyone welcome to my channel so we are studying s1 handover and we have already seen handover preparation uh, in last lecture so here we are uh, going to study handover execution so the figure that i have shown uh, this means uh, these indirect tunnels has been created uh, as a result of handover preparation procedure okay and this dotted lines are showing the signaling let me make it for target e node b as well okay so <clears throat> let me uh, briefly explain what has been done so far so ue has met uh, ue is moving towards target e node b okay and the criteria for a3 has been met and uh, this ue has sent uh, the measurement report as a result of this A3 criteria and on the basis of measurement report enode B decides uh, to go for X2 or S1 handover so here as no X2 is present uh, S1 handover will take place okay and during this uh, handover preparation this indirect tunnel has been formed using different different DIDs that I have shown in last lecture okay and uh, and currently this is the S1 bearer uh, which is used uh, for the sharing of uplink and downlink traffic between E node B and SGW and this is the DRB which is used for the sharing of uplink and downlink traffic between UE and source E node B okay but now source E node B wants to hand over its uh, all the services to this target E node B so let's see how it will take place and one more thing uh, this source e node b has already received some parameters which are allocated by this target e node b uh, during handover preparation message they are crnti and the drb id okay these are the param parameters which ue is required while accessing the target e node b okay so let's start with handover execution the first message uh, that source e node b will send to unit ue is handover command ho command and in terms of rrc we call it rrc connection reconfiguration message okay and the content of this message as, as i have already told you these things will be included so drb id and crndi these things now finally are delivered to ue okay so you can say source e node b is saying to ue that uh, now detach from me and i am providing you some details which will be uh, required to you to access the my neighbor or target e node b so you will detach uh, through this source e node b so this drb will be removed means no more this drb will be uh, present between source e node b and uh, ue okay even signaling will also not be there okay this so everything at radio has been removed between source e node b and ue now ue is continuously moving towards this target e node b and meanwhile the source e node b will send a message we call this message at e node b status transfer okay content are uplink count and downlink count basically this message is for means it will it is used to send the target e node b and tell him that at which uh, packet uh, means packet number you can say it should uh, forward the it should receive from ue and it should forward the packets to to ue okay so this is the second message sent from source in node b to mme mme will forward this message to target e node b name of that message is mme status transfer mme status transfer content will remain same that is uplink count downlink count 
Uplink count, downlink count. Okay, so third method has been delivered. Now, so as I have already told you that radio is not available, means radio resources are, are not available at between UE and source node B. So what will happen to the packets uh, which are coming before handover that is which are coming before handover from SGW from SGW towards uh, source node B. So the path of these this message will be like this SGW to source node B the downlink packets are coming okay because this is the barrier which is established between uh, E node B and SGW before handover okay but uh, because SGW doesn't know that handover is uh, proceeding uh, between source node B and target node B so SGW is behaving as it was uh, behaving earlier like uh, it is sending downing packets to source node B but source node B will means as no radio bearer is available that is data radio bearer is not available so source node B will forward these downlink packets to SGW again but this time it will use this indirect tunnel that we have created in handover preparation part and that SGW will forward these downlink packets to target e node B via this indirect tunnel okay so target e node B has received the downlink packets finally and it will buffer them okay if you remember uh, in x2 handover what happened just let me tell you so that uh, you'll get exact what is the difference uh, in terms of downlink packets so in uh, x2 handover uh, this is our source node b this is target node b instead of indirect tunnel direct tunnel has been established okay so downlink packets follow this path sgw to source node b source node b to directly target node b okay but here uh, the story is little different from sgw to source node b and from source node b to sgw again because direct path is not available towards target node b okay so then sgw forward those downing packets to target node b and target node b starts buffering them because uh, so far ue hasn't accessed uh, this target node b okay so let's call this process number four okay now uh, suppose ue has reached here okay and now uh, some procedures will take place to uh, access target node b these are like uh, cfra procedure will take place that is contention free random access procedure okay if it is inter frequency then UE has to tune its antenna to those frequencies as well okay and sync frequency sync will take place okay DRB ID is already there with UE okay okay so uh, UE will send an RRC connection reconfiguration message to RRC connection reconfiguration complete message remember guys reconfiguration is from source e node b to ue and reconfiguration complete message is from ue to target e node b okay so uh, we also call this message as handover confirm message okay so this will be the fifth message the fifth procedure you can say so after that uh, drb drb has already provided to ue so the data radio bearer will be established between ue and e node b okay okay and if you remember uh, the uplink bearer 
was already uh, established between target E node B and SGW during handover preparation message if you forgot then you can visit that tutorial okay this is the link S1 bearer and this has been established uh, during handover preparation message okay okay so uh, this is the handover execution part so what's happening now the downlink packets following the path SGW source E node B SGW again target E node B and one more thing uh, just 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 uh, wait for a second actually uh, once this DRB is established these buffered packets will be provided to UE okay so now the communication or you can say the transmission of uplink and downlink packets started between UE and target E node B and the uh, path will be from SGW to source E node B source E node B to SGW again and from SGW to target E node B and then target E node B to UE this is the path of downlink packets and the uplink packets will follow the path UE to target E node B and then target E node B to SGW let me draw a line so that easily visible to you this green line is showing the uh, path of downlink packets this is SGW to source E node B source E node B to SGW SGW to target E node B and target E node B to UE it's a very long path okay and now the uplink packets will follow the path from UE to target E node B and from target E node B to SGW and SGW further forward those packets to PGW okay here the pgw will be present okay so this is the handover execution means uh, for this call this means uh, so far or better to say means in handover execution this will the this will be the flow of downlink and uplink uh, packets you can say the path of downlink and uplink packets okay guys in next lecture we'll see handover conf uh, completion part okay thank you